Hi, this is Gillette Johnson, and you're watching Mr. Media. Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk to New York Times best-selling author Jackie Collins, whose latest novel of sex, power, Hollywood, and international intrigue is The Power Trip. Stick around. This is Jackie's third time as a guest on Mr. Media. And don't tell my wife, but I think she's kind of sweet on me. So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is the Mr. Media Interview. The show is brought to you today by Amazon.com, the world's greatest store for everything from books and movies to computers, TVs, and even my favorite soft drink, Pepsi Wild Cherry. Thinking about buying something online from Amazon or just want to do a little window shopping? You can save yourself a lot of money and help support Mr. Media, that's me, by clicking on one of the Amazon ads at mrmedia.com and start your shopping with us. Get yourself the new iPad or Kindle Fire. Feeling a little racy today? Amazon's got what you need to feel exciting and new, as they used to sing on The Love Boat. Remember, start your next shopping trip from the comfort of your own home, car, hotel, or office with amazon.com at mrmedia.com. That's right, mrmedia.com. And folks, thanks for your support. Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience of American rocket scientists who always guess that the foreigner is the bad guy in books and who were quite confused to discover that just about all the characters in the power trip are foreigners in the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. Go ahead. Ask me what most surprised me in reading Jackie Collins' latest story, The Power Trip. Nope, it wasn't the sex. It was the sweeping action sequence that brings this wild tale to its conclusion. Now, I know Miss Collins has written action before, but this was entirely kick-ass, far more than I would have expected. It changed the complexion of a story otherwise baked in privilege, extreme sexuality of many stripes, and a load of catty gossip. As always, Miss Collins has packed her story with colorful, powerful, manipulative figures, male and female alike. It seems like everybody has an angle, everybody is striving, and everybody is game to climb over anyone they have to in order to be king of some imagined hill. Now, quite honestly, there are very few truly likable characters in the power trip, although I was charmed by the UK football star, Tay Sherwin, and the Latin singer Luca Perez. Now Lori, the movie star's seemingly interchangeable girlfriend, she comes closest among the women to being agreeable, but uh, yeah, I'm still not entirely sold there on her either. <laughs> now, if you want to read a page turner that will make you lose track of time and space, I can heartily recommend The Power Trip by Jackie Collins. Now, I also recommend that you stick around for this interview because Miss Collins' first two visits to Mr. Media were nothing but delightful fun. And this time, we're going to ask her, we're going to impose on her to read a selection from The Power Trip. And with that, Jackie Collins, welcome back to Mr. Media. Hi, how are you? I'm good. It's so nice to see you this time. We did audio the last time. This is so much better. 
And I know this is fun, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And I'm straight off the Craig Ferguson show too, which what? I did last night. Well, then we'll just we'll have to get uh, whatever's left over. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's plenty left over. It didn't sound right somehow. So, (laughs) you know, I I, I, (laughs) it was kind of weird. Um, I mentioned at the top of the show that what I really that I really enjoyed the the climactic action sequence in the book, and I wondered was it was it a little different for you, or have I just not read enough over the years of Jackie Collins? Yeah, I think that you know the Power Trip is the kind of book that I've always wanted to write. It takes me away from Las Vegas and Los Angeles but it still creates a, an exciting venue, which is Cabo St. Lucas, the Sea of Cortez. And I have this Russian billionaire who has this amazing yacht built to take his beautiful girlfriend, Bianca, on a cruise. And he says, you can invite five couples. And these five couples are all very privileged and famous and, and off they go. And what happens during the course of the book is that they get pirated by Somali pirates. Because there's all kinds of backstories going on with the Russian gangsters, Mexican gangsters. You said something interesting. You said there's so many different nationalities in this book. And it's true. There's Australians, English, American, Mexican, Somali, and Russian. So you've got a choice. It's, it's, really, it's really packed with uh, international and... Uh I just, you know, the action at the end, I just was like, well, I'm reading through it. And, you know, we know, we only want to give away so much here, obviously. We don't want to give away how how, how the story ends, of course. But it's interesting that um, you can see that it's building because there's the Somali pirates are headed into the story. And you know that there's going to be some conflict. But, you know, up until that point, it's... uh, you know, there's sex and there's, uh, you know, this one wants to get the best of that one and this one's tired of that one. And, and then there's, that kind sex, of and there's and, sex and there's sex and then there's sex. And, you know, they would, it would have to be a little raunchy or, you know, I don't think you'd put your name on it, frankly. But um, then all of a sudden there's this action sequence uh, with Flynn, uh, the journalist. Thank goodness. I like the journalist getting some action in more ways than one. Oh, good. Yes. And uh, it just, it takes on a completely different complexion at that point. It really surprised me. It was, it was great. I mean, I really enjoyed it. Well, my, my publishers call it a sexy, sun-drenched thriller <laughs> because, you know, the, the end is quite exciting. And, you know, when I write, I have no idea what's going to happen next. So I did not know what was going to happen when the pirates actually boarded this incredible yacht hmm. and, and, you know, gathered together all these rich people on the yacht. And a lot of things happened on it. I... I got the idea for this book because I was on a yacht myself and we were going from the south of France to Sardinia. Mm. And in the middle of the night, I kind of woke up and I went upstairs to speak to the captain because we were doing a night trip. And I said to him, where are we? And he said, well, we're two and a half hours out. I said, what does that mean? He said, well, it's five hours of clear water to Sardinia. And I said, you mean there's no land? He goes, no. And I go, well, oh, well, what if we were pirated? And it's it's quite possible because these pirates now are getting closer and closer. And there have been, of course, robberies on these magnificent yachts. Because when you think about it, it's only a yacht. It's not an ocean liner. Mm -hmm. And so you've got a crew of maybe 12 people. You've got the guests. And you've got major money on on these boats. So, you know, why not? Well, and and yeah, it seems like the pirates have been getting bolder and bolder rather than less so. Um, had you thought about that before you stepped on the yacht or not until you were out in the middle of it and didn't really have any choice? I'm always one of those people who, you know, I'm ready for the emergency. So when I started to uh, go on these yachts, some friends of mine would invite me every year. I would always think, what if it sunk in the middle of the night? So I'd always have my gym shoes and my sunglasses next to my bed. (laughs) Now, is there a character uh, in the power trip that you would more or less identify with? I'm, I'm thinking no. I didn't. I don't see you as any of those folks. Well, I, I like to create strong women, and I think one of the um, reasons I've been lucky enough to be successful all these years is because I do write kick-ass women, <laughs> and um, I like the character of Bianca. She's a spoiled, beautiful supermodel, but there's a strength to her that I like, and she's very sexual and she's very kind of feline, and I loved her relationship with the Russian. Oligarch, you know, they, they have this great sexual chemistry. I also like Laurie very much because yeah. she's a girl that's come from nothing and she's fighting to get what she wants. And what she wants is the 50 something movie star who's never been married mm-hmm. and she wants to nail him. And then I like Ashley, who's the English kind of like, you know, she's an interior designer. She's married to this gorgeous black footballer mm-hmm. and all the women want him, but he loves her. He absolutely loves her, but she kind of treats him not too good. 
The interesting thing about the power trip I found when I was writing it, and as I told you before, I don't know what's going to happen next. But for me, the interesting thing was the, the change in the characters as the book progressed. And maybe you didn't like them at first, but then maybe, you know, you, you saw a change in them and then you grew to like them more as the book went on. Well, I, I think that's I think that's a that's a very safe uh, thing to say because yeah, uh, Ashley in particular couldn't stand probably for the first third of the book. She was uh, right. obnoxious and arrogant and just spoiled and and taking advantage of her husband. I thought, uh, and I don't like say her that, husband. Yeah, yeah. Tay, Tay was Tay was fun to write. Yeah, I, I liked him a lot. And then uh, get her away from her kids and the and the mother and the mother in law, and suddenly she's like a human being. Yeah. I think she just needed sex, some good sex. <laughs> I, you're not going to hear me say that, that that a woman just needed some sex. I, I'm saying it. I, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I got to go back to a marriage when this conversation is over. Oh, I, I don't want right. to. I don't want to be the one well, getting okay. caught saying that. You know what? Take the power trip back to your marriage because I get so many letters from girls who go, "Oh, you know, I was reading this book on my honeymoon, and my husband said." You've got to put that book down. And then I said, you know, let's read this passage together. <laughs> and we ended up having a fabulous time. There you go. I can and see And so many other girls say to me, oh, you know, I learned everything I know about sex from you because I borrowed my mother's copy and I was under the bed with the covers with a flashlight reading and you taught me everything. And I go, I hope your boyfriend's not disappointed. And they go, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of the sex in the book, one of the things that you deal with uh, – and, and, and rather matter of factly, is uh, gay sex that there, there's a there's a gay couple, and you 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 write about uh, how uh, Luca was previously I uh, can't remember the woman's name, but he was previously with sugar. A, right sugar of course s u g a sugar, uh, and he yeah. had previously been with her when he uh, realized that he was gay and he came out and she handled it very well, and you handle all this very matter of factly. My question is. Uh, we won't say how long, but I mean, you've been writing these kind of books for for quite a while. You've got a, a very yeah. long and storied career. When was it okay to start writing gay characters the way that you write them now? And when was it not? Well, you know, it never was because I've been writing for so long. But I've always written gay characters because that's the life that I see around me. You know, I see people of all colors. I see people of all sexuality. I see people of all ages. And I think that is one of the attractions of my books, is that there's something for everybody. I can write a teenager, I can write somebody who's 90, I can write a gay character, I can write a, a, a masculine man, because I'm a storyteller. That's the gift that I was given. I'm not a literary writer, and I've never pretended to be. My biggest critics are the people who've never read me. They'll go, oh, you're reading Jackie Collins, oh my gosh. And then they'll read me, and they'll go, oh, wow, but it was a really good story. And they're so surprised. And I'm like, you know, I've sold over 500 million books over the years and published in 40 different countries. Um, I just got a couple of Chinese editions of The Power Trip, which is fun. Oh. And so I, I, I've always um, integrated gay characters into my books because that's the life that I lead. I have many gay friends and I don't want them to be cliche characters. And especially in The Power Trip, there are different kinds of gay characters. There's really nice ones and there's really nasty ones. So you get a, a kind of choice. True. There's a cross-section. You know, I, I wouldn't have thought to ask you this, but since you mentioned the Chinese editions, um, yeah. when, uh, when films go into China, first of all, they're very limited. I think there's only 25 to 35, uh, uh, I don't know if it's American or English language films that are allowed into the country each year. And then they yes. are severely edited uh, for content. What happens to a Jackie Collins book when it's published in China? Well, it is so interesting you should ask me that because I'm finally being published legally in China. But about 15 years ago, somebody translated Hollywood Wives <laughs> into Chinese and they put it in the bookstores and the translator actually wrote to me. I wasn't getting any money out of it or anything. I mean, there was no legal deal. But apparently they put a million copies out and the Chinese people were lining up as though they were getting bread for free to get this book. And then the Chinese government got word of this and they actually went to seize the books that had all been sold by that time. And then they threatened to execute the publishers because I was corrupting Chinese youth. And this is the newspapers and everything. Whatever happened to those poor publishers, I don't know. But... <laughs> I was corrupting Chinese youth. Well, apparently now it's okay for me to corrupt them. And are they, are they do, when they actually license the book, uh, yeah. do they, are, they being, are they being edited or are they printing as is? 
Well, since I don't speak Chinese, I have no idea how they translate them. Okay. Well, maybe I only know that they look great, and I'm like happy. I'm in China. Okay. Good thing. I'm very big in Russia at the moment too. And last year I went to Moscow, which was a fantastic trip. I think it's one of the attractions that I like writing about Russians because I seem to know a lot of Russians,、mm. and you know a lot of the very rich Russians who come to London or who come to Los Angeles. And so I had a fascinating time in Moscow. And some of the things that I, I write about in the power trip, actually, I observed when I was in Moscow.、Hmm. Yeah, I would think that they would be very open. This seems like that kind of the kind of story that would go over well in Russia somehow. I think. Yeah, and I have so many young fans there. I have young fans anyway. I mean,、hmm. most of my readers are somewhere between the ages of, as I said, fifteen and ninety. I mean, it's great. I cover the waterfront, <laughs> but in Moscow, I don't think they let the old people out because. I did signings at bookstores, and they were all in their twenties. There were crowds and crowds and crowds of, of kids in their twenties, and it was great, you know, because ageism does not exist if you're a writer.、Mm. You can write till you're a hundred and ten, and and you know, still appeal to people. And you're an actress, you know, because ageism hits you on the head, or a director. But you know, if you're a writer, you can do whatever you want to do for as long as you want to do it.、Mm. Well,、yep. uh, speaking of writing and reading,、uh, we had talked、uh, earlier about、uh, maybe you could read a little passage from the Power Trip. Do you?、Uh, oh yeah, I would. I just happen to have a copy here. That would be great. So let's see. You know what I'm going to read you? I'm going to read you the prologue. All right. And then I'm going to tell you something about it after. It's a little short prologue. Here we are, the Power Trip the prologue. I'm finding it for you now. Okay. The couple on the bed had sex. As if it were their final act, and for one of them it was. Neither of them heard the door slowly open. Neither of them observed the shadowy figure enter the room. They were too caught up in the throes of passionate lovemaking. Until one single gunshot. The death and orgasm happened at the exact same moment. Life has a strange way of taking you on an unexpected trip. This was one of those times. Now, the reason that I find that an interesting passage to read to you、mm-hmm. is because when I wrote that, I had no idea who those two characters were going to turn out to be, <laughs> and it was only as I wrote the book that I realized who they were. I just thought it was a great beginning, and I knew there were going to be characters that there would. You know, fit right into that. To me, writing is like a tapestry; every little piece fits eventually. But I don't know how it's going to happen because I pick up my pen, I write in longhand. I don't know where my characters are going to take me from day to day. I have no idea. So that, to me, is a very interesting scene because I didn't know who they were, and it wasn't until I was three quarters of the way through the book that I found out who they were, and they come to me and they tell me. Well, and it's funny because and people say to me, "Oh, I couldn't put your book down," and I go, "It's when I'm writing, I can't put my pen down." It was that damn prologue that kept me going. You're right; it was three quarters of the、oh, way、really? through. Oh, really? Well, yeah, because I read that, and then、I'm, every time I turn the page, am I going to find out? Am I going to find out who are they? Who's going <laughs> to die? <laughs> I know.、Oh, I know. Was... Well, then you saw at the end that it was somebody worthy. Yep. Ah,、uh, yeah.、Uh, without、worthy、a doubt.、Death. It was, yeah, and, and you know, I you 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 kind of get about halfway through, and you're you're rooting for that person to die. <laughs> right, exactly. Because I, I did.、Uh, you know, it's 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 boring to just write nice characters. You want to have the J.R. Ewing. You want to have, you know, the Alexis Carrington Colby,、mm. a character that I actually created in the Stud, a book that I wrote way back.、Mm-hmm. Because I had a character called Fontaine Callard, and she was the same character. Aaron Spelling saw the movie of the Stud, and he said, "Jackie, that character is great," and he stole her and changed her name, and she became Alexis Carrington. Colby in Dynasty by my sister, my older sister Joan Collins. So that was, you know, interesting. But I've noticed that people do pick up on themes from my books, and maybe all of a sudden they pop up in a movie or something like that. But I'm hoping that the Patrick will be a movie. Oh, it would be a good one. And you know, I, I was curious. Well, two things I wanted to ask you about this book.、Um, one is, it seemed like any number of characters from this book. Could continue into another book, right? And I plan to write another book about Flynn.、Uh, I really, so. women, yeah. Are, yeah, women are falling in love with Flynn. They're coming to me on Twitter. I'm Jackie J Collins on Twitter, 
and they're saying, we want Flynn back, bring him back. What's going to happen with Flynn? He's a really interesting character because amongst all these rich and famous people that are on the book, boat, and there's, you know, the corrupt senator, there's the gorgeous uh, Latin American singing star who's gay, there's the black footballer, uh, English, and, and then there's the, you know, uh, movie star. So amongst all these characters, I give you Flynn, who's a journalist, and he's just come back from Afghanistan where he has seen one of his best friends get his head blown off by a suicide bomber. Yeah. And he's like, you know, a fabulous superhero. But he doesn't come into his own. He's got problems going on, on the boat, but he doesn't come into his own until the pirates board. And then right. Flynn is a superhero. He's like a, you know, a Navy SEAL. He's fantastic. Because he's different. He's a man with integrity and a moral compass. Mm -hmm. And I love that in a man. And I think most women do, you know. Also, he's great looking, so <laughs> what's not to like? <laughs> so maybe I have a shot at the part in the movie? What do you think? I don't know. I'll be auditioning. Okay. <laughs> I bet you will. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I thought I actually, I thought Flynn would, 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 was really a good candidate to, to get another story. And the other part of that question is, the thing that struck me was that this could easily have been uh, a Sant'Angelo story as well. I could easily see characters... Uh, from from the Lucky series, uh, you know, inserted in different places here as well. You know, it's interesting you should say that because at one point I thought maybe I'll put Bobby and Denver on the yacht because Bobby Santangelo Stanilopoulos is Lucky's son mm -hmm. and he's gorgeous and he's like 25 years old and he has this beautiful girlfriend who's a district attorney. Right. And so I thought they would be a good couple to add. But then in the end I thought, no, this isn't a Santangelo book. I am currently writing another Sant'Angelo book, which is called Confessions of a Wild Child. And that's going to be Lucky going back in time when she was 15. Mm. So it's interesting. It's, you know, Gina married her off to a senator's son when she was 16 because he just didn't know what to do with her. She was so out of control. So I want to show people, because people love Lucky so much, and I want to show them how she formed her character, how she became the woman she is today. It must be tempting sometimes to uh, to do a book w when you're doing a book that is not about Lucky and and her clan, and feel like you know I could really this could be a Lucky story. It, it, yeah, you know. I know, I know. You know, I've written 29 books, and out of those 29 books, seven of them are about Lucky Sant'Angelo, and I know that people love her so much, and I love her so much. She's the woman I'd like to be in another life, <laughs> and so I will continue to write about her. But now she's the matriarch of the family. You know, people say to me, how old is Lucky? And I go, how old is James Bond? She's ageless. Mm. <laughs> well, we know she's a little older because she has kids. But other than that, yes. you, you don't really have to... She's like Madonna's age. You know, yeah. she's around about Madonna's age. And Madonna looks pretty damn good, she does. right? She does. Yes. Yes, she does. So one of the things uh, you mentioned, and I, and I know I've picked up on over time, is you stay very involved with your with your fans and your readers uh, online. Some, I do. Some writers don't do that. Why? Why do you? Because I mean, you you know, you've got a limited amount of time well, I writing. Love my, and readers. my readers have been extremely loyal to me over so many years. I get so many people, you know, saying I started reading you when I was 15 and I'm 30 now and I still love your books. And, and they're loyal readers. And it's so lovely. I do a thing on my website, um, which is JackieCollins.com, where you can get autographed, personalized pictures. And I sit down once a week and I sign like 500 pictures and with their names. And I, I, I think it's something that I can give back to the fans because I remember when I was a kid in London growing up and I had this obsession with Hollywood. I would send fan letters to Tony Curtis, Rock Hudson, you know, the movie stars of the time, Paul Newman. And when that envelope came and there was a signed picture, it was like such a thrill for me. But I, I like giving back to people. And so I do that for my fans. I talk to them on Twitter. Uh, I'm on Pinterest. Pinterest is so much fun. It's my addiction at the moment. You know, I have smoking hot guys on Pinterest and I have dogs and I have flowers and I have food and I have fashion. <laughs> And so, but it's giving something back to my fans. And that's why I have um, written this book now called The Lucky Sant'Angelo Cookbook, which is coming out in time for Mother's Day next year. And that is illustrations of Lucky, which are fabulous. It's little scenes between Lucky and Lenny and her family. And it's these incredible Italian recipes. I worked with a, a chef in New York and we came up with all these great recipes. So it's going to be fun. It's called The Lucky Sant'Angelo Cookbook. Well, speaking of books in the works, the last time we spoke, 
you talked about an autobiography that had been in the works for a while. What's I the, know. What's the progress on that? That's kind of my side project, you know. I have so much else going on. As I told you before, it's called Reform School of Hollywood, and it starts off, um, I have the first uh, page, which you would be intrigued by. I'm not going to use the words, but it's don't move blank or I'll blow your blanking head off which was actually said to me by a guy with an Uzi in my face when he was trying to carjack me. So that's going to be the beginning. It's not going to be, oh, I was born in London and blah, blah, blah. It's going to be a series of things that have happened to me in my life and, you know, interesting and different. And I want to make it something like fun for people to read and yet to get a little insight into me because I, I really keep my personal life very private. Mm -hmm. So it'll be... It'll be interesting, and I am working on it, and I'm still working on it, but I work on it on the side. That's my side special project. And uh, when you work on an autobiography, I mean, uh -huh. you think it, it forces you to think about where you've been and what you've done. Oh, yeah. Have you, have you learned things about yourself by having to actually put these things down on paper? I, I do think you learn a lot about yourself. I mean, I write very strong women. And I think one of the reasons I write strong women is because when I was growing up, I had beautiful parents, really physically perfect, a beautiful blonde, handsome, tall, dark, and handsome father. But I watched the interaction between them. And although my father loved my mother, he was also a womanizer. He was very attractive, and I would watch the double standard in action. I would watch him with his friends. I would watch the way they would talk about women. It was almost like that mafia kind of thing where... You know, women are either wives, mothers, sisters, daughters, or they were whores. So it was so interesting. And as I go back over my life, I can remember myself as a small child listening to the dirty jokes that would take place about women and the way women were disrespected and the fact that my mother put up with it. And so I think that did color my life very much. And I want to ask you, since we, we have the advantage of video today, uh, yeah, and I'm I'm assuming <clears throat> you're actually at. Are you at your own desk? Yes, I am. I'm on my own computer at my own desk. Is there anything yeah, you can show us from your desk that that's important to you, or maybe share something? Well, uh, I don't have my manuscripts there. I cleared it up for you, especially. Ah, thank you for that. <laughs> well, here's the paperback that's just coming out in England of um, the Power Trip. Right, I recommend. that's kind of a nice cover. Yeah. I love I love getting books early, and then. Here's a new copy of Chances, which was the first St. Angelo book. Mm -hmm. A new copy of Lucky, which was the second St. Angelo book. People love Lucky because, you know, it's all about her and how she became. And then, of course, I always love to have my Panthers around me. Panthers. So let me see if I can reach one to show you. Here's one of my special Panthers. Oh, my. Why Panthers? A Baccarat Panther. I've always loved Panthers. Huh. So I surround myself with them. Interesting. Isn't he gorgeous? Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, that just gives me visual pleasure looking at him. I don't know if you can see him properly. Oh, yeah, we've got, a, we've got a very good image of him. But uh, yeah. how, how long have you been interested in Panthers? That's interesting. Well, if you want me to go on Panther in another life, because I, I have paintings of Panthers, and I have bronzes of Panthers, and little Panthers everywhere, and I just absolutely, you know, love them. Wow. So. <laughs> That's my Shirley MacLaine story. <laughs> okay. I think I was a black soul singer also. Those two things kind of resonate with me. Um, being English, we were very into soul, listening to soul music, you know. I love listening to soul music. People like um, David Ruffin, The Temptations, Stevie Wonder, going way back. Very nice. Good. You have good taste in uh, music as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, actually there is a... Um, there is a site for the Power Trip. It's uh, its own special site, the PowerTripBook.com, okay. where you can get a trailer. We actually made a movie trailer of the book, which is so much fun. And there is a list <clears throat> of records that I suggest you listen to when you're reading the book. So it's a really fun site, a website. So it's the PowerTripBook.com. Okay. Check it out. It's really fun. And also on Amazon, you can find a prequel to the Power Trip which is the day before the book starts. And it's a 5,000-word short story that I wrote. Wow. And so that's really fun, too. It's, it, it's basically about Bianca and Alexandra and Flynn. And they're all in Paris at the same time, the day before the book starts. It's, uh, it's interesting that a lot of authors are, are, are con 
connecting their books to lists of music that uh, they they equate to it. I, I actually uh, talking to another author actually later today, and I saw on on his site similarly he had a Spotify list of uh, recommended uh, music that would go well with his oh, book. Really? And I thought, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, I think it's a kind of a trend. You know, I, I like it. I I put a lot of Latin music on there, a little sting, this French track and stuff like that. Because I want people to feel, when they read the power trip, mm -hmm. I want them to feel that they're on this amazing yacht, that they're taking this incredible cruise, that they're eating the caviar, that they're drinking the champagne, that they're visiting these deserted islands with these beautiful waterfalls where some of them are having sex. <laughs> and reading my that mind, I, was just, that I, planted the, <laughs> I was thinking of that scene, or scenes, I should say. Oh, that was an interesting scene where the beautiful supermodel and the Russian oligarch get it on and the senator, the cheating senator, is hiding in the palm trees watching. Yeah. I like writing that scene. I can <laughs> visualize it so much. And I, I, want, I, I love to give people visual images. And, you know, if you look across the country today, it, thick snow everywhere and terrible gales and, you know, the weather is so bad. I want people to be able to pick up the power trip and take a trip a mind trip, a visual trip, so that they're on this journey with me, with these characters, and they can feel the sunshine, they can feel the heat. It works. It definitely works. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, good. All right. Well, um... Uh, oh, your trip? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Did you enjoy your power I, trip? I did enjoy the power trip. My, my trip and your power trip. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Well, folks, listen, you can find The Power Trip, the new Jackie Collins novel, in great stores everywhere, or you can order it right now, as always, at a great price at mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. If you're watching the video, just look below the video on mrmedia.com. You'll see the cover of the book. Just click on it. You'll be able to buy the book right there. Um, let's see, you talked about the, uh, for website, thepowertripbook.com, uh, but there's also jackiecollins.com, right? Uh-huh. There's also my website, which is lots of stuff on my website, all the interviews I've been doing lately, all the videos. It's a fun site. I love going there myself and visiting. And then, of course, there's Pinterest, Jackie J. Collins, and there's Twitter, Jackie J. Collins. So I would be happy to talk to my fans on Twitter and my readers. You're loyal, and I love you. You're always there for me. Very nice. Well, uh, Jackie Collins, a pleasure to see you this time, and uh, thank you so much for coming back and joining us on Mr. Media again. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. You can see and hear almost a thousand Mr. Media interviews by visiting our main site, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. Or check out the more than 200 video interviews on the Mr. Media radio site on YouTube. And I'd sure appreciate if you'd show some love from Mr. Media's advertisers, including Stitcher. Apple named Stitcher a top five news app of 2011. It's a free mobile app for your smartphone or tablet that lets you listen to your favorite shows and discover the best of news, entertainment, and sports on demand. You can listen whenever you want to to more than 5,000 shows, get customized recommendations, and discover what your friends are listening to. My own list of Stitcher favorites is pretty eclectic. I start my day with an hour of MSNBC's Morning Joe with Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski. Then it's the latest two-minute update from the Onion News Network. After that, I'll listen to WTF with Mark Marin, Here's the Thing with Alec Baldwin, HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher, and excerpts from E's Chelsea Lately and The Soup with Joel McHale. Also in regular rotation on my Stitcher playlist, The BS Report with ESPN's Bill Simmons the TechCrunch headlines, and the Don Geronimo Show. The latest episodes of each show, whether originating from broadcasts, cable TV, radio syndication, or podcasts, are continuously updated. Stitcher is a free app for your iPhone, iPad, Kindle, Fire, Blackberry, Droid, and more. And show your support of Mr. Media by getting, did I mention it's free? The app at stitcher.com slash mrmedia. That's stitcher.com slash mrmedia. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. We're also supported by Audible. Check out Audible's 30-day trial membership and download the audiobook version of the book everyone's been talking about, Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James. Sign up for your free trial today at audible.com slash radio. Again, audibletrial.com slash radio. 
And finally, if you need a disc jockey for a wedding, bar mitzvah, corporate event, or just a big old party, please consider calling 1-800-DIAL-DJs, the party authority, for all your party entertainment needs. You can call 1-800-DIAL-DJs or go to their website, 1-800-DIAL-DJs.com, and tell them Mr. Media sent you. And thanks for listening. Today's episode of Mr. Media Interviews is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. You know GoDaddy.com from their wild and sexy commercials, but isn't it time you actually test drove their web hosting and domain registration services yourself? For a limited time, Mr. Media listeners can save 10% on the already low price of web hosting services at GoDaddy.com by entering the promo code POD4 at checkout. Again, that's 10% off web hosting when you go to GoDaddy.com and enter the promo code POD4, that's P-O-D, the number 4, at checkout.